Did you know that God is in the blessing business? In 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, the Bible tells us, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. And that lets us know that God is searching for people to bless. Then you have Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, which says, For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. The bottom line is God blesses people, the good and the bad. So today I want to share with you some biblical principles that will help you understand how God can bless you, why he blesses you, and the attitude you must have when he blesses you. So stay tuned. Hey there, extraordinary child of God. I'm Simona, and this is a place where you learn to transition from where you are to where God wants you to be. So if you've experienced pain, heartache, or disappointment, and you're ready to push past life's challenges so that you can live a life filled with peace, joy, and fulfillment, then you, my friend, are in the right place. Now, before we jump into today's lesson, why don't you help me out by liking this video, sharing it with a friend, and subscribing to my channel. By doing this, you let YouTube know that faith-based content like this is definitely worth having on their platform. So today, as we discuss the blessings of God, I want to take a look at the children of Israel. Now, the children of Israel are people chosen by God. They are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob. And their life collectively as a nation hasn't been the easiest. They've been displaced from their homes because of a famine, and they had to move to a foreign land. And then while they're living in that foreign land, they become slaves to the Egyptians. The children of Israel have had a hard way to go. But thankfully, God in his mercy came and performed some mind-blowing miracles that resulted in the children of Israel receiving their freedom. So now that they've been set free, their greatest desire is to settle into their new home. The home they've been dreaming about for years. The home whose land flows with milk and with honey. But because of their poor decision making, getting to their future home has been rather challenging. Because they chose to distrust God and murmur against him, instead of taking them directly to their new home, God caused them to wander in the wilderness for 40 long years. And now at the end of this 40 year period, the children of Israel are tired and they're more than ready to settle down into their new home. But there's just one problem. Their home isn't vacant yet. There are people living in the land God promised Israel and these people are a problem. They're a problem because one, they have no intention of leaving the land. Two, they are physically stronger and much bigger than the children of Israel. And three, their cities are fortified with mighty walls that reach toward the heavens. And based upon these facts, there is no way the people of Israel can go and possess the land. They simply don't have what it takes to defeat these people. But despite all this, the Lord keeps telling them to go. He's made it crystal clear that this is the land that he wants them to settle into. This is, in fact, the land of promise. This is a blessing he wants to drop down on them. So what God does is he gives the people a pep talk slash reality check. And in this conversation, he mints no words. Listen to what he says. Hear, O Israel, you are to cross over the Jordan today and go in to dispossess nations greater and mightier than yourself, cities great and fortified up to heaven, a people great and tall, the descendants of the Anakim, who you know and of whom you've heard it said, who can stand before the descendants of Anak? Therefore understand today that the Lord your God is he who goes over before you as a consuming fire. He will destroy them and bring them down before you. So you shall drive them out and destroy them quickly as the Lord has said to you. Do not think in your heart after the Lord your God has cast them out before you saying, because of my righteousness the Lord has brought me in to possess this land. But it's because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is driving them out before you. It is not because of your righteousness or of the uprightness of your heart that you go in to possess their land, but because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord your God drives them out from before you. 
and that he may fulfill the word which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Therefore, understand that the Lord your God is not giving you this good land to possess because of your righteousness, for you are a stiff-necked people. To summarize it, God is saying to the people of Israel, I'm about to do for you what you can't do for yourself. I'm about to bless you real, real big. I'm about to conquer some people who you can't hold a candle to in battle. And I'm going to bless you with all of their land. Land that they spent years cultivating and developing into the coveted land that it is today. A land flowing with milk and honey. But don't get it twisted. You don't deserve these blessings that I'm about to pour on you. And truth be told, my motivation for doing this has nothing to do with you. In short, I'm making you the recipients of undeserved blessings. And as the story is told, God did exactly what he said. And the children of Israel were blessed beyond measure. And here's the thing. There are going to be times when God showers you with undeserved blessings. When you wake up in the morning and take a deep breath of the air that God has provided for you. You're the recipient of an undeserved blessing. And oftentimes that type of blessing goes unnoticed because we're so used to receiving it. But there are also going to be times that God determines to bless you with blessings that are so big you can't wrap your mind around it. That house that is so beautiful but so far out your price range suddenly goes into foreclosure and you're now able to purchase it. That's an undeserved blessing. That job that you aren't qualified for, but for some reason you get hired. That's an undeserved blessing. That passing grade you got on that exam that you didn't even study for. Undeserved blessing. There are undeserved blessings that you receive on a daily basis. But just because you receive some amazing blessings doesn't necessarily mean that your heart is right with God or that you are favored by him which is why I want to share with you three tips about blessings. Number one, God has a thousand reasons why he might decide to bless you. The reason the Israelites were blessed truly had more to do with the favor God had for their forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the fact that the wicked nations needed to be punished than it had to do with them. So never assume it's because of your righteousness that you're blessed. Number two, nothing is impossible with God. And I mean nothing. The Israelites couldn't conquer the land on their own. It was physically impossible. And what you need to understand is that there are going to be things you're going to face. Things you're going to desire that appear to be impossibilities. But you must never forget that God is the God of impossible. So sometimes you just got to move forward in faith toward your blessing and leave all the so-called impossibilities to God. And number three. Position yourself to be the direct target of God's blessings. Don't settle for random blessings. Instead, strive to receive those blessings that will overtake you. Deuteronomy 28.2 says, Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Don't you want to be overtaken with the blessings of God? Come on now, I know I sure do. So think about that. Keep those tips in mind and make sure that you are positioning yourself to receive the blessings of God. So be encouraged, my friend. Keep these three principles or tips in mind and know that God wants to bless you. He's looking to and fro to see who he can bless. Now, if you're struggling and you need a little bit of encouragement, I want you to grab a copy of my book, Trusting God When It Doesn't Make Sense. It's my testimony and it's filled with life-changing spiritual goodies that will help you along your faith journey. You can check it out by clicking the link in the description below. So let me know what you think about today's message by leaving a comment. And I look forward to seeing you next week, Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You extraordinary child of God. God bless. See you next week.